All right. I'd like to welcome everyone who's joining us right now uh, for the next installment of the FCCA webinars. Uh, I'm going to give it about a minute for everyone to load in. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we have Josh here with us today. Josh is the new president, CEO of Carnival Corporation. Josh Weinstein, happy to have you today. How are you? I'm doing well. Happy to be here. Thank you, Adam. I, I want to thank you so much first for taking time out of your busy schedule for joining us for the next 25, 30 minutes. I uh, really appreciate you making time for the FCCA. Uh, and I want to thank you uh, and, and, and welcome you to your new role. Uh, thank you. You know, it, it couldn't happen at a better time. It was announced during Sea Trade. Yeah, that was, uh, that was, uh, it's hard to believe that was already almost four months ago, huh? So it's, uh, I thought you were going to say it couldn't have happened at a better time given COVID and everything. <laughs> I'm not sure that's true, but uh, I've, I've, I've been here for 20 years. I love the company. I'm really looking forward to this, uh, this new stage. All right. Well, again, appreciate your time spending it with us here. Um, so I know you're a busy man. We're going to get started right away. Uh, first question, you know, new role. What are your objectives for this new role? Uh, you know, for, um, I guess for the immediate, you know, I've got an immediate horizon and longer term. The immediate is, you know, we as a corporation, we need to fully shift our mentality and ways of working from uh, return to service, which we, we've pretty much done, to return to strong profitability. Uh, and, and that's all about, you know, getting our ships full and getting them full at, um, at good prices, watching our costs, um, delivering on the experiences, working with our destination partners to make sure that our, our guests are, um, are, are enjoying themselves and want to come back. And, you know, that is, that's pretty much priority number one is we get, you know, get our, get our footing on, on real solid ground. And then as we look forward, you know, I've got uh, I've got long term goals that we'll be working through uh, as a corporation. Not surprisingly, they focus around um, number one, making sure every single one of our brands owns its space in the in the vacation market. Uh, we're going to rebuild our financial fortress. But we're incredibly strong going into the pandemic, and we will get back over time by generating revenue, watching our cost, and and paying down debt. We need to. We need to make sure that we are travel and leisure's employer of choice and uh, and we attract people and we help them grow their careers and they want to stay with us. And there's a lot that goes into that from a sustainability perspective. Uh, we need to be obviously reducing our carbon footprint, working with our partners around the world, our destination partners, to make sure we are doing everything we can in a responsible and healthy way. And we're creating lasting relationships. Um, that are mutually beneficial, and uh, I'll stop. I'll stop. There's more, but I'll I'll stop. No, listen. This is your time. You you know we, this is great to hear. So we, you mentioned about partnerships with the destinations. Um, you know, FCCA is about mutual partnerships uh, with our destinations, with our stakeholders. Um, you know, how can the FCCA and what's the importance of the FCCA in your operations? But, you know, I, I think the, the FCCA has really um, has really shown um, just how important it is over the past couple of years. You know, our ability as an industry um, through FCCA, you know, getting through this pandemic in in um, in the Caribbean footprint, um, it is it would have been a hell of a lot harder to be honest with you, because, you know, I don't know how many, I should know this, I don't know how many cruise lines are, are participatory in FCCA, and I don't know how many countries, but if you try to do the math and, and you, you set up all of those relationships, relationships on a one-on-one -on -one basis, um, as we work through protocols and restarts and operational hurdles, it would have been much more difficult uh, for us to accomplish this. So, not notwithstanding the fact we have great direct relationships with many of the um, many of the the participants listening today, that coordination role has really been wonderful. It's helped us cut through a lot of noise, frankly, um, uh, over the past two years. 
Well, I, I appreciate that. And, and here, we, you know, we try to do our best at, at, at forming, um, you know, collaboration and communication. Um, you know, if there's one thing that's come out of COVID, I can say it's stronger collaboration and communication with our destinations and our partners out there. Um, you know, what would you say, uh, you know, has been the strongest part for your brands coming out of COVID right now and dealing with the FCCA and, 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 and these facts? Um, well, you know, you know I, I do think that from a collaboration standpoint, it's probably not surprising that the, the first thing that comes to mind is our ability to coalesce around um, protocols and ways of working uh, that have um, that have continued to responsibly be relaxed over time, and and um, and I think um, given the nature of cruising and given the, the the nature of itineraries, our ability to do that holistically um, through the FCCA um, rather than trying to piece together country by country, point by point. Um, again, it's it's made life it's made life better. I think as we get through this. Um, and we get back to you know more of a of a sense of normalcy. Although I recognize we're not we're not there yet. I think some of the things that have previously been of top priority need to get resurfaced. Uh, and I think the FCCA is a good platform to have those conversations around the sustainability agenda, right? Changing climate issues, um, other environmental issues, safety and security, um, the overall health of the region. I'm uh, I'm really looking forward to to working with uh, with our with our destination partners, uh, and I'm working working with through through the FCCA where appropriate to to do that. So um, jumping ahead a little bit here, um, you know, when I introduced you, I said you're president and CEO of Carnival Corporation, but mm. you're also the chief climate officer. Yeah. And, and you know, at the same time, I don't think I've ever uh, heard of that same title being in the same uh, position there before. Um, you know, speaking of sustainability, you know, Carnival Corporation itself is making a, a huge leap into LNG, right? Yeah, that's uh, right. About 20% of our capacity would be LNG in very short order. Okay, so, uh, you know, you, you've pushed forward at a carbon neutral rate and you want to have that carbon neutral by 2050, if I have that correct. Um, what can the destinations that we work with uh, help you to, or, you know, what they can do to help you with the increasing these goals and helping you get there? You know, we are obviously, I will, uh, if anybody tells you differently, you should call them out on this. Um, we have our aspiration to be net carbon neutral by 2050 as a corporation. We have no idea how we're going to do that yet. We don't because the technology doesn't exist. Um, we are in a, in a world where um, the technology is advancing at rapid stages, the types of fuels that can be burned um, are continuing to evolve. We are, um, aside from LNG, we are trialing through R&D, fuel cell technology, battery uh, technology, we're looking at methanol, we're looking at everything because nobody knows what the answer is. And so you know, working with our um, our partners in the Caribbean, I, I'd say it's an open invitation. We want to understand um, what you're looking for when it comes to your your goals on achieving net carbon neutrality, and we'll figure out how to work together. Um, I don't think we're at a point in time where anyone can can give a roadmap to any destination that says if you do X, Y, Z. That's how we're going to do it. Um, doesn't exist. So we'll uh, we'll continue to evolve. We'll continue to try to be transparent and share what we what we learn and how we're thinking about our future, um, so that we can better arm destinations with um, information that they can use in their roadmaps as well. I think LNG is going to be here for quite some time. Um, uh, but um, yeah, if anybody knows the answer, let me know. Feel free, <laughs> feel free to reach out to me. And let me know. <laughs> But we do take it, I'm kidding, but we take it very seriously. You know, from our perspective, we reduced our carbon footprint. We reduced it every year. Uh, our absolute carbon peaked in 2011, despite the fact that we are significantly larger 
as a corporation today than we were back in 2011. And every single year we reduce our, our carbon rate intensity. Uh, we've done uh, more than 20% since our baseline year, which I want to say was 2008. Uh, and we've got new targets that we've already established to get 20% lower than where we were in 2019, our last full year of operations uh, by 2030. And I feel confident that we'll get even further than that. And, you know, carbon's only a piece of it. Uh, there's so much that goes into sustainability and being a good corporate citizen. We, we published our 2021 sustainability report. It's available on our corporate website. And so for those of you who, who have not yet seen it, I would encourage you to look at it, uh, understand it, and then please uh, reach out to Marie McKenzie for any follow-up or ideas or suggestions about how we can partner uh, more strategically in, in anything in that space. We're open to everything. I am as part of my job as a new CEO. Well, that's, that's great to hear because a lot of times we take meetings uh, with destinations and they talk about LNG and, and, and developing those facilities. Would that give them a competitive advantage? Uh, maybe, maybe for some time. Um, I don't know what investment is required for some of these destinations to be able to provide it and what the returns are that they need to make that viable. Um, and what kind of time frame? So I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't take it off the table. Um, but there's only a limited amount of LNG ships in the world today. Uh, we've got. I think I, I could be wrong, and I apologize to any cruise line if I got it wrong. But as of today, I still think we're the only ones that are operating them. Although that that's changing rapidly, and and, and there are plenty else that, that are going to get introduced. All right. So um, you know, and, and one of the things that's happened uh, over. Uh, the COVID time right now and, and in the operations that have moved forward is a lot of other brands, your, your competitors out there, Celebrity, Norwegian Cruise Line, Royal Caribbean, have increased their, their current positioning and home porting in the Caribbean and Latin America. Um, is this something that Carnival Corporation is going to be looking at as intensifying in, our, in the regions that the FCCA has? Well, I guess first, first a plug for us. I mean, all those other brands are just trying to catch up. Uh, because when you look at our footprint um, between Aida and Costa and P&O Cruises, um, we've been doing this for years and we love it. Uh, we, we love the partnership. We, we love the experience that these destinations are able to give our, our guests and our crew. And, um, and we'll always look at opportunities as they arise. Okay, so I want to be clear. Josh is the one who said that, uh, not Adam at the FCCA. So none of the I would like to I'll specifically call out, but I like to make fun of Michael Bailey. I can't help it. And I know everybody on the call feels the same way. So. <laughs> All right. And uh, wait, Jay, wait, wait, just because people might not know my sarcasm. I love Michael Bailey. And we like to make fun. So, so this is the part where we had a bad connection and we had, no, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> So, uh, you know, with that also being said, uh, part of the new, I guess, the new normal right now is more capacity, longer stays. What are the biggest subjects that come up for the Caribbean and our other partners, Mexico, Latin America, is, is summer cruising. You know, how do we get more capacity in the summer for our regions? Yeah, no, I, I frankly, in the short amount of time I've, I've been in this role, I've, I've heard that. Um, and, you know, look, Number one, where do the guests want to go? Or where do we think that they will want to go? And what's going to drive that? That, uh, that, is, that is our guiding principle as a starting point. So, um, you know, we will look at opportunities as they arise. We, we certainly need destinations to work with us. If we're not there right now over the summer, it's because our guests would rather be doing something else. Uh, at that point in time. So we need to figure out, well, why? Why is it more attractive for our ships to be taking our guests to different locations uh, in the summertime? And, you know, when you think about what I was saying, P&O Cruises and Aida and Costa, you know, those are, those are Brits and Germans and, you know, folks from Italy. And, you know, I, I don't, I, I'm saying this in a generic way and I don't mean any disrespect, but my guess is, you know, the, the destinations on the call here, their demand from those countries 
ebbs and flows, forget about cruising. Um, there's more demand in the winter time than there is in the summertime. Um, having lived in the UK for three years, I know that's the case because I know Brits are, are, are just going gangbusters for the Caribbean, particularly the Southern Caribbean in the winter time, but it's not as of interest um, at other points in the year. So we've got to figure out, well, what is it that we can do to make cruising and cruising in those destinations more attractive over the summer? We can't do that on our own. We need our destination partners to help us figure that out uh, more, maybe more niche projects, uh, products, cultural heritage, gastronomy, you know, uh, adventure, whatever that might be that can fit, we're open to it. Uh, we just got to figure out what works for our guests. Well said. So, um, you know, that, you know, if you, let me, let me reverse this on you. And I'm sure. sorry, this is a question that's come in from one of our guests or one of our panelists here is if you were the CEO or leader of government in a country, what would you be doing right now? Probably talking to me and saying, here's, here's why we think a summer program can work. If you're talking about specifically follow up for this question, um, mm -hmm. I think it'd be, you know, getting a, you know, for me to educate me, certainly, you know, Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I have it wrong about Brits, for example, in in the summertime. And if so, well, what's drawing them to um, a particular destination? And it's got to be at a price that you know it is makes sense from us. We have a lot of stakeholders, uh, and so if if that's the case, then maybe I just need to get educated, and then we can figure out right how how can we divert more, uh, grow that market uh, via cruise. And I'll, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, that, that's great that you're willing to you know, step in that role and, and take those meetings because, you know, with the FCCA conference coming up, yep. there's going to be a, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to want to talk to you now. Well, I'm going to I'm going to make Marie. Uh, she's the one that actually knows everything. So as long as Marie's with me, I'm good with that. <laughs> OK, um, so let, let's talk about some of your new cruise ships coming out. Uh, a lot of the our FCCA member lines and we have a lot 23 member lines. I've come out with new ships, uh, innovative products. Do you want to speak about some of your new ships that are coming out and innovative products? Well, you know, we, we are we are constantly, um, constantly trying to cater to a particular brand's guest demographics and what they're looking for. And we'll, we'll you know, we've got a, a bit of a philosophy at Carnival Corporation that we like to make incremental, um, incremental changes. Uh, because ultimately you want some consistency across across your particular brand's fleet um, of ships. And so we I think we've done a very good job as we've been introducing this new uh, new capacity to do just that. You know we keep so much of what works for a brand. You know, if you go on any carnival ship, you're going to find the guy Ferry burgers and the blue iguana, Mexican cantina and and and. And yet, Every single time we'll we'll take that next change. Um, we'll we'll incorporate that next change to make it even more special, like Bolt, uh, first roller coaster, roller coaster at sea. Uh, you know, PO Cruises uh actually uh Arvia, uh, which will be well known in the in the Southern Caribbean soon. Uh she's a sister ship to PO's Iona, but she's different. She's got features on board um uh such as a 4D escape room adventure. Um, uh, experience uh, that didn't take place on our uh, Iona, even though it was delivered just two years earlier. So we're constantly reinventing while trying to maintain the ethos of the brand uh, uh, and, a, and a consistency uh, across across each of our each of our fleets. And and how have your your guests and passengers uh, uh, reacted to that? Uh, you know the the new ships they they do phenomenally. Um, you know, and um, and that's not a terrible surprise. And and they are bigger and bigger. And so when we do uh, bring in these new ships, the the opportunity for economic impact um, in a particular destination grows uh, pretty dramatically uh, based on the just just the sheer footprint uh, of what we're bringing. So in in one of your last statements as a corporation, you came out and you said that uh, bookings were up huge. Right. And this is a question coming from one of our guests listening right now. 
Do you expect that to keep following through 23 and 24? I do understand a public company. There's some things you can say, I'm just the messenger, don't kill me. Yeah, that's, I, I, unfortunately, I'm, I've been trained very well by our uh, CFO and, and head of uh, investor relations. I'm not allowed to talk about uh, booking trends. Um, so I can just defer you, uh, refer you back to our, our last business update at the end of June and, and, and bookings were going, were going well. A uh, very good answer. So uh, the last questions come in. Uh, if you're a small operator, a tour operator, what would you be doing right now to better position and work with Carnival? I know it's a, a it, you know, it's a little weird question for you, but yeah. uh, you know, these are the questions that come in. If you're a small operator, you said? Well, a small tour operator that wants to kind oh. of position himself with, with Carnival right now, what would be the first thing that you would be doing? Um, well, I, I, I've been making sure I have a, a differentiated product to, to, um, to wow and excite our guests, right? If you have that, um, I didn't, you know, I guess the next thing is you got to find out who the right person is to contact. And, um, and frankly, if, if you don't know, maybe we can, you know, that's a role that FCCA can help play, reach out to FCCA and they can make sure that they, they can get you in touch with the right person or people at Carnival Corporation. So, um, you know, if you, if you got the idea and the product in hand, then, then go through FCCA if you can't figure out who to, uh, who to reach. Uh, you know, and, and to that top tool operator that asked that question, the other thing is, is the FCCA conference is built for that. You'll have mm -hmm. access to all the cruise executives, such as Josh and Marie, uh, to ask and find out the proper approach for that. Um, so Josh, last question, know you're a busy guy. I'm going to let you go, but this one's more personal when you're not running carnival. Now, what do you do in your spare time? What do you do personally? What do I do personally? Uh, so I have three teenagers. So <laughs> frankly, our life pretty much revolves around them. Uh, outside of that, not surprising. We love to travel. Um, any, any chance we get, uh, I, I do like to exercise. I try to do that every day more for my mental well-being than my physical well-being. And, uh, I don't read nearly as much as I would like to, uh, when I do read it's fiction because there is way too much reality nowadays. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, That's very true. So, yeah. uh, J Josh, I'd like to thank you for your time as promised. We wouldn't go over. We know you're a busy guy. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, the FCCA appreciates your time. And I'd like to thank you again for coming on the FCCA webinars. For everyone else, stay tuned. We're going to have another great one announced shortly. Uh, and we appreciate your last 30 minutes spending it with us. Thank you. Yeah, I just say, you know, thanks to everybody on behalf of Carnival Corporation. I really want to thank everybody uh, for all their partnership and efforts. And I'm looking forward to working with you on behalf of FCCA. Um, I would say um, to Grand Cayman and USVI in particular, thank you for stepping up and working much more closely with the FCCA. And we look forward to doing the same uh, via FCCA um, with, uh, with everybody. So thanks everybody and, and, and have a good day. Look forward to meeting you in person. Thank you, Josh. All right, take care. Take care.